One day, while I was eating dinner at home, I heard a knock on the door. When I went outside, I saw a middle-aged woman holding a small doll. There was something creepy about that doll. Its hair was a few short strands, its face was frowning and grotesque, and its skin was as realistic as a real person's skin. The lady looked at me and she screamed, Give me something to eat! Anything! Uh, I'm a vegetarian, so the only thing I can give you is bread. Would you like that too? She nodded her head and I brought her the bread. Then she snatched the bread and stuffed it into the mouth of the doll she was holding. The doll's mouth was quite large and seemed to have a lot of space inside. It was as if the bread was being sucked into it. I looked at her with a confused expression and she said, She eats everything. She'll probably eat your face off too. <laughs> then she put her ear to her doll's mouth and after a moment she suddenly said, She wants meat. She says the bread is not delicious. I was horrified and just closed the door. Then she shouted from outside the door. Babies need to eat protein to grow taller. A few days later, there was another knock on the door. And when I looked out the window, she was standing at my front door holding her doll. The doll looked different. It appeared to have grown in size and its hair had grown longer. The frown was less prominent than before, but it was still a creepy face. I was unsure whether it was the same doll as before or a different doll, and I wanted to look at it more closely. I opened the door and handed her a sandwich. She fed the sandwich to her doll. I looked closely at the doll. Teeth that weren't there before had grown, and it looked as if the doll was chewing the sandwich. I thought to myself, is this a doll designed to have jaws that move automatically? Is it just my imagination? I felt an inexplicable, unpleasant feeling rush over me and I closed the door. The president of the company that made that doll must have been controlled by an evil spirit, I muttered to myself as she continued to feed the doll outside the house. From that day on, she kept coming to my house, but I stopped answering the door because looking at that doll gave me goosebumps all day. After a few days, I was used to ignoring her knocks. Then, one night, I woke up startled when I heard a child's angry voice outside the front door. I checked the time. It was 3 a.m., and I was irritated. I carefully looked out the window. In the darkness, I saw the woman standing, holding the hand of a doll that was bigger than before. This time, the doll was standing on the ground. The doll's face had a severe frown. The woman knocked on the door and screamed, My child wants to eat soup with meat right now! Then she tried to open the window of my house. Damn, I'm a vegetarian! I was so angry that I screamed at her, and then she disappeared. The next day, as I was passing through the neighborhood, I noticed a police line had been placed on my neighbor's house. I asked a local resident standing there what was going on and what he said was shocking. You know the woman who carries a doll and begs every day? She killed the man who lived in this house. However, the method of murder was a um, bit bizarre. The man's stomach was cut open with the doll's fingernails. The police said the doll's fingernails were sharp as knives. What's even more shocking is that she made soup with the flesh of the man's corpse. When the police asked why she did such a thing, she said that her baby's favorite food was human soup. He pointed to the doll that was lying at the scene as he explained. The doll was so heavy that when the police cut open its stomach, they found a bunch of soup inside. However, they said there were things inside the doll's stomach that looked like intestines, and they were as realistic as real intestines. The police said they couldn't figure out where the doll was made. They said they had never seen such a doll in their lives, and then it was made of an unknown material other than plastic. I froze on the spot. I looked at the doll. It was bigger than when it came to my house the night before. Its hair was long and thick. Its teeth and fingernails were like blades, and it had a faint smile on its face. I quickly returned home, and for several days I had terrible nightmares about the doll eating my flesh. I later learned the woman's story. She was homeless at the time, and someone had left the doll next to her, so she carried it around with her, thinking it was her baby. People thought she was crazy, but no one has figured out who made the doll. 
who gave it to her or how it grew. One day, my friend Lucas came running into class and breathlessly said, Hey, did you hear the news? A few days ago, a man in the neighborhood called the police, but he didn't say anything. So the police went to his house and found him lying in the bathroom with his head cut off and a cell phone in his hand. Really? If that's true, it's super scary, I said in shock. What's scarier was that they couldn't find the head. But that night, another person saw someone dressed like a scarecrow running around holding a trident with something round stuck on it. At first, she thought it was a pumpkin or something, but now she thinks it was a human head. Wow, that's terrifying. It's not even Halloween. Who on earth would do that? Let's be careful now. If the killer shows up, show your ugly face. Then he'll go find another head. Dude, how can you make jokes in situations like these? It's no joke. As stupid teenagers, we tried to pretend that nothing was wrong even though we were scared. That night, while I was sleeping, I heard a crow cawing from the window. I mumbled in my sleep, annoyed. Crow, you better shut up before I break your neck. But after a while, I heard someone whispering very softly, Maybe you should watch your own neck. I was startled, and I looked out the window to see a man standing there. He was wearing a big hat like a scarecrow, and his face was a bizarre mask made of gunny sacks. He was cawing like a crow. I was so shocked that I screamed until my uvula popped out of my mouth, and at that moment he opened the window and let himself in. It's so loud, I have to slit your throat to shut you up. I threw the blanket at him, jumped out of bed, and ran out of the room faster than Usain Bolt. He tore at the blanket with his trident and chased after me. I ran and screamed until the house rattled. This quite obviously startled my father, who came running out with his gun, and I started crying and screaming, Kill the scarecrow, Dad! My dad went into my room with the gun up and ready, and the man jumped out of the window and ran away. The next day, as soon as I left school, I went to see Lucas, grabbed him by the collar and said, you were kidding yesterday, right? You owe me a new blanket. What are you talking about? His face was a mask of total confusion. However, when I looked at Lucas's scrawny body and thin forearms, he was clearly not the man who had been swinging a huge trident single-handed last night. I was in a huge panic. Then Lucas actually had the stones to make fun of me. You're such a baby. If a guy like that breaks into your house, you just poke him in the eye with your finger, kick him in the balls, and hit him between the eyes three times in a row, and it's over. Ah, if I were you, he would be lying in the operating room by now. Pity. Lucas was punching the air in his imagined fervor, but I couldn't say anything. A few days after that, Lucas didn't show up for school. Then... I heard something shocking from my teacher. Lucas had been murdered during the night. He was found with his head cut off and his fists had holes from spear punctures. But his head was nowhere to be found. The neighborhood was turned upside down and the entire police force stood guard day and night, maintaining high alert. Then one day, a police officer was found handcuffed in a police car with his head cut off. But this time, there was a video from the car's dash cam. However, the culprit wasn't in the video. At first, all that could be heard was the sound of two people struggling. But then the police officer spoke up. If you're going to cut off my head, do it one go so it doesn't hurt. You should really let me go. I won't tell anyone I saw you. After that, a dull sound and a scream blasted out, and a moment later, the back of the perpetrator running away giddily, with the police officer's head stuck on his trident. The police did their best to catch the criminal, 
but to no avail. There were, however, plenty of rumors circulating. Some people said they saw the criminal's face. Some said they knew who the criminal was. And some even said they were the criminal. But it was all lies. After the police officer's death, the killer was never heard from again. But since then, people in the neighborhood still sleep armed. I still have doubts. Who was the culprit? Why did he take those heads? And what did he do with them? I'm Arjun, and this is my story. This happened a few months ago. I'm a guy just out of college and was searching for a job. During that time, I was living with my parents in one of the big cities in South India. My parents had to go out to meet a friend of theirs, leaving me alone in the house, and I was sort of spooked because the night before I had watched one of the scariest horror movies. My house has two floors. My room and the bathroom is upstairs. They left early and I got ready to get into the shower. I had the weird habit of playing loud music when I take a bath, but this time my phone was low on battery, so I charged it and switched on YouTube to play music on my TV. Before I went into the bathroom, I flipped on the light switch, which was outside the room. A few minutes passed after I got in the shower. I was bathing and enjoying the music when suddenly the bathroom light turns off. I ignored it, thinking it might be because of a power outage. But then my mind started to wonder, if this is a power outage, why the heck is the TV still playing music? I could feel knots in my stomach as I thought of the possible reasons why the light bulb went off. There was no way the problem was with the bulb because it was recently replaced. But then that meant someone had switched it off from outside. I got out of the shower, wrapped my towel around my waist, and had my hand on the doorknob. When suddenly, I heard the sound of the switch being flipped and the light in the bathroom came back on. By this point, I was trembling in fear. I peeked out the door and shouted, Hello? Mom? Dad? Are you guys back? But there was no answer. Then, I heard the sound of some plates being thrown down on the floor below from the kitchen. I reminded myself that I'm an adult now, and I gathered my courage and decided to go check what was happening. I let the music on the TV continue playing loudly for additional courage. Then I reached the top of the stairs. I slowly peeked from the top of the stairs to the floor below. There I saw some plates and utensils on the floor, but I couldn't see anyone. The rational part of my mind started coming up with explanations, like that it could have all been a coincidence. Once I had been watching for a minute or so and couldn't see anyone, I walked down the remaining stairs, checked all through the floor, including the closets, and even made sure the back door to the house was locked. I was about to relax, thinking I was just getting paranoid, when suddenly the music playing upstairs stopped, and heavy footsteps started coming from the stairs like someone was walking down them. I couldn't just stand there and wait to see who it was, so I ran. I ran outside the house wearing just my towel and waited near the gate of my house without even my phone. Almost an hour later, my parents returned and I told them what happened, but obviously they thought I was just pranking them. When we went back into the house, I was alert, expecting an attack from anywhere, but nothing happened. Then my mom scolded me for being irresponsible and leaving the back door to the house open. I almost fainted when she said that because I'm dead certain that it was locked when I was looking around earlier. To this day, I still wonder what would have happened if I had waited to see the person coming down the stairs. I never want to know the answer because I'm sure something bad would have happened to me by whoever or whatever it was that turned off the bathroom light.